Hi everyone, I hope you're doing well. I hope you're happy, safe and sound, but also creative. That's why today we're going to paint together, me and you, a pear. Here it is right there. Good. But also at the end of the video, we'll be talking about Zoom classes that I am currently giving. And um, you don't even have to get in the car and go anywhere. You don't have to pack up all your supplies. We just paint together, me and you. So let's begin our project. We're ready to begin. Let's look at our colors. Titanium white, Naples yellow, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, burnt umber, raw umber, alizarin crimson, cadmium red light, lemon yellow, cadmium yellow medium, Cerulean blue and ultramarine blue. It doesn't mean I'm going to, going to use all these colors, but at least they're available to me, or, or perhaps I will add more colors. So let's mix these. Um, I'll probably go from lighter to darker. And um, so we'll do that on, in uh, fast painting. <laughs> That's an excellent start, and within these colors, we'll be able to intermix them. So let's move on. We are ready to, for the fun part, and that is painting. But to some people, the fun part is actually uh, mixing colors. That is a lot of fun, too. We might as well begin with the little stem. And you notice here I have a little bit of, um, it's just a combination of thinner or really um, odorless thinner and linseed oil. I would say about 80% thinner and about 20% linseed. Just helps our paint to flow. And I'll go ahead and start with the stem, like we said. Put a little edging to it. I find that when you pre-mix your colors, like I did, that it it really helps you. In fact, um, you spend less, after you do that, you spend, I think you spend a lot of less time mixing 
and you can start concentrating on your artwork. You added a little bit of um, alizarin crimson. And we'll put a little light there. I will soften the soften it here. Just a little bit more burnt orange here. I put a little bit of acrylic around just to help my eye to be able to perceive the colors in the inside. We are ready to move on to the top of the fruit. On the top of the fruit. We begin. And you've probably seen in my other videos my technique where I take an area, I cover it, and then I feather it out. See, so feather it out. There might be those of you that are new and haven't seen that. I'm feathering it this way too for the next color. This might sound silly, but let me tell you anyways, don't be scared of color. Sometimes adults are scared of color. We've been taught not to be wasteful. And we think, oh, if I mix the wrong color, I will be wasteful. And that affects our painting because we're too scared to mix. The areas I've gone over are not complete yet, so don't don't get nervous. They're not complete. Move on to a little bit of a bigger brush. This time a flat brush down here. 
Well, I'll continue with the edge and then I'll go I'll do that. I don't know if some of you noticed, but when I was mixing my colors here, I would usually go back and forth between cool colors and warm colors. For example, this one here, it tends towards warm, but cool, warm, cool, cool, warm, a little bit cooler. Okay, so it goes back and forth. And the reason we do that is because that is very, very pleasing to the eye. Now it's interesting, I don't know if you can see it from there, let me show you. Down here, before we get to the shadow, we have a color that intensifies. So we put a little edge of that color. It's like a strong red-brown. And then after that, we do have their strong shadow. So much fun to paint, isn't it? It's just very, very satisfying. If you have friends that are looking for something to do, you might encourage them to paint, paint with you. Or you can all take classes together too. Like I said, don't worry about the colors in a little bit. We're going to blend them. Although I think they look pretty like they are too. You know, sometimes people ask me, how do you see all those colors in there? Well, what it is, is that you can't let your mind trick you. What do I mean by that? What I mean is that sometimes we look at a, an object and our mind tells us, our mind tells us 
that has to be this color or that color. And then that's what we go and we pick. So if we let our mind trick us here, we, we, we say, oh, a pear. A pear is yellow. And we pick a yellow that we like. And then we make it lighter and we make it darker. And then guess what happens? Your painting is boring. But objects around us, no matter what they are, they have so many colors. And so we tell our mind, like I look at this and I, I, I don't tell my mind that is a pear. I just look at the colors. What colors do I see? It doesn't matter what it is. And it's even if next time I paint a different pair, I have to look at it brand new because it's a different pair because it's in a different environment with light hitting it from different directions and reflecting differently. So I have to look at it brand new. Now I'm using a thin brush with a little bit of extra solvent in it, thinner, so that the, the paint will flow nicely on the edge. That's a little technique in case you haven't hadn't heard about that one. Here in the shadows, I'm going back and forth with um, cool colors and warm colors. So in the shadows here, like right there, I have cool colors, but over here, warm colors. They just look pretty next to each other. One enhances the other one, really. All right. Um, now... We will blend these and we'll still make adjustments, okay? So now you take a clean brush and we will be, oops, I saw a little something there. Right on the edge here, a little color. There we go. <laughs> okay, take your clean brush, dry, and we're gonna start blending. If you if you're we're not going to blend like this, but low and soft in different directions, not always the same direction. OK. All right. So we'll start at the top here. Barely touching. Sometimes I'll do it flat. Sometimes I'll turn it. Can you see that? OK, you control the brush. Don't let it control you. And if you pick up too much paint, it's okay. We'll just put more down. Painting should not be, should not make you worried. Should, painting should not be strenuous. You should enjoy it. Even if you mess up, we can cover it up or change it. Okay, look how pretty this is looking.
Fun, isn't it? When you take my classes online, online on Zoom, I teach a lot of these techniques. And I check your artwork. Sometimes you need that extra pair of eyes. I see a little extra red here. Let's put it in. Right there. Now that strong color down here I told you before the actual shadow. Then clean my brush. Now move upward. Up, 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 gentle, up and down, up and down. Even in blending, we have to watch it. We, there's times when we don't want to over blend because then we will take away. There's patterns in here, little patterns. And if we over blend, we'll take them away. Okay, we pull it here. I think it's looking very beautiful. And I saw a little stronger red down here, dark brown red. There, look at that. Gave it a little extra curve. Now, what we will do is we'll put in some of the little imperfections. Okay, let's do some of those little imperfections. Well, let me uh, just soften between the darkest and the next color. Okay, imperfections, let's move on. Imperfections like, like this one here. You know what, this brush is starting to open on me. I need a better quality brush. There we go. If you find that your brushes are opening up too much, and they're past the point of saving, just throw them away. I took a little bit of red, the brown red, put some in here. And this part, some of them are a little on the brown side but not very you know the red the the red brown is not very strong it's almost translucent 
like it's like you barely see it. I'm actually adding extra solvent in it so that it will be translucent. So that underneath the color shows through just a little bit. Okay, I'm going to do some that are... little more orange, so let's try those. Burnt orange. I'm going to do some irregular ones here and there. A little bit here, a little bit there. The sun goes down so quickly now and that it's November. I don't know if you saw what I did there. I put too much paint down, so I cleaned it and I went back and it it sucked up. Then it was the right color. So all kinds of little techniques like that. There's a caution when you're doing something like this. The caution is that make sure you don't do it all very, very symmetrical, everything perfect, especially students I have that are very organized people. They try to take that into the painting. They try to organize. So what they would do is take all these dots and put them perfectly spaced at a perfect angle or perfect line and fruit is not like that okay we're going to take now those were warm colors let's take some other let's take some cooler spots now and make some cooler spots again we're going to do it translucent this time there in the green family with the umbers like burnt umber no oh, i'm sorry raw umber it's important to know the difference between the umbers okay not like me that i just told you reverse
Now, since I'm going to put some in the shadows, I will make it darker like this. Because the color I used over here would not even show up on this side. Okay. I think we're almost done. This is really a fast painting. Generally, I'm a very slow, slow painter. Sometimes people say, can I watch you paint? And I say, no, because if you do, you're going to get bored. I'm, I paint super slow. Even for YouTube, I paint a little extra fast. Usually, I would take more time than this in a painting. Oops, I covered a little bit of a more light there. All right, I think we're just about done. So don't give up on me. I think that's it. Let me see. Check everything one more time. I might actually go back and clean a little bit of the, this right there. If you feel that some of your dots are too strong, there's a few things you can do. One thing is clean your clean the brush. And just barely touch it like this. Watch, so I'm going to soften this area just a tiny bit. Barely touch it. There we go. Look at that, it softened it. There you go. Nobody ever taught you that? Oh, I hate one. Teachers keep secrets to themselves. There we go. All right, I think that's our pair. Well, that was a fun project. I really hope you liked it. I, I had fun everything. Mixing the colors, applying the blending, and seeing the final result. As I mentioned, I'm giving Zoom classes, and they're very affordable. Um, usually we'll work in a small group, and I help you along with your own project, whatever project you have going on. I guide you along, I, let's, I tell you just this, or just that, let's try this color, let's try this stroke. And um, I let, but I let you, of course, always develop your own style. I don't make you paint like I paint. Um, I just help you along with the technical aspects. And um, there's so many benefits to it. Right now, um, we're all pretty much cooped up. So it's a great time to further your painting skills and um, to meet new people. And like I said, you don't have to pile everything into the car and go paint somewhere but uh, you'll have a great time so contact me my information below and um, if you haven't subscribed as of yet please do and um, bring along any friends that you would like again you all stay happy safe sound and creative take care we have a very nice project it's uh we're going to paint a pair and you're going to see it's not
very difficult, but it does require a few steps. Don't worry, we'll take it a little at a time. Here it is. But also, we're going to, uh, at the end of the video, I'm going to introduce... Terrible. Also, at the end of the video, we will announce Zoom classes that some in the area here are already taking advantage of and, and they're really enjoying. And um, I don't know. <laughs>